we have a presentation today from ComScope on their new uh, low PAM passive line. Um, all participants will be muted during the presentation. So if you would like to uh, submit some questions, there is the questions console on the GoToWebinar uh, setup. Um, if you do think of a question, just ask it whenever you think of it, and then we will address them at the end of the webinar. Um, we are recording this webinar, so uh, if you do have to drop out or you have someone you'd like to have um, view the webinar afterwards, don't worry. As soon as we're done, I'll be uploading it to YouTube, and you can watch it as much as you would like afterwards. As well, if you'd like a copy of the PowerPoint presentation, um, you can just send an email to me after you receive the recording link. I'm now going to hand everything over to Mike, and he's going to do a brief introduction to Alliance and to the topic. Thanks, Lisa, and uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Appreciate your time. Uh, as Lisa mentioned, uh, going to do a brief uh, overview of Alliance. Um, Alliance is a wireless innovation logistics leader. Um, we've been in business for uh, over 20 years, been providing solutions for the wireless industry, and uh, we are definitely uh, working to build your next generation uh, of 4G and LTE networks. We are uh, Canada's leading distributor of wireless infrastructure products, uh, warehouses throughout Canada as, as well as US and uh, Cala. Um, we have an extensive inventory, uh, expert independent recommendations on the team. We have uh, a vast experience. Most salespeople have at least uh, 15 years experience in, in the product lines. And uh, we have a world-class product assortment, uh, including uh, our, one of our uh, premier partners, Comscope. Uh, our business focus, we, uh, we focus on the carriers, the contractors that support them, uh, integrators as well as OEMs and uh, anything that falls in, the, in, in between those. Some of the solutions we provide, point-to-point uh, so -point radios, microwave, broadband, uh, macro equipment, whether it's antennas or cabling or connectors or fiber, um, and uh, in-building solutions as well, which we're talking about today, uh, as well as uh, a fiber line that we have that uh, we manufacture our own line of fiber uh, for uh, tower top installations, as well as a supply chain solution component to bring it all together. Some of the alliance and building solutions we have uh, for small space, we have uh, multi-carrier and single carrier solutions, as well as uh, an assortment of uh, uh, solutions for medium and large space, whether it's a multi-carrier or single carrier, as well as outdoor DAS. And uh, to go along with that, passive products, splitters, combiners, dash trays, uh, antennas, and uh, cables, both fiber coax and uh, CAT6. I uh, want to make note that uh, we uh, invite everybody to the Northeast DAS event that's uh, happening in Toronto on September 29th. Uh, put it in your calendars, and uh, we hope to see you there. Um, I'm going to pass it over shortly to Diane uh, Coitham. Um, Diane is a strategic project manager for Comscope on the DCCS side, so that's a distributed coverage and capacity solutions. Uh, her main role is to lead strategic implementations for key projects and, and product introductions for DCCS. She's launched the uh, IONU product line, the INE product line, and is currently working on the uh, Comscope Low PIM passive component product line. So at this point, going to pass it over to Diane, and uh, thank you, Diane, for, uh, for attending today. Great. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everybody, uh, for having me uh, come and present to you today. So um, as Mike said, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the PIM, PIM passive products that we have and just kind of what's going on in the marketplace and, and how these products can best be used and kind of solve some of the problems that are out there. And really, the biggest thing that's going on right now is this huge data tsunami that's been brought on by smartphone usage and tablets and just everybody streaming um, all their data from YouTube videos getting shared on Facebook by millions and millions of people um, all trying to access that and that really is putting a big load on the system. In addition to that, you know, we see that about 80% of mobile data is now occurring um, indoors and um, so, you know, how, how are people starting to deal with this? Um, <coughs> is it <coughs> deployment of uh, LTE? Um, in a recent study, it's estimated that LTE subscribers used 168% more mobile data than the traditional uh, 3G subscribers. 
And as more uh, subscribers are migrating to using this LTE and smartphones, this demand is going to be, be really strong. Um, so there's basically three ways that operators are, are dealing with trying to get um, more capacity into these networks to provide the coverage and capacity that's needed for this data demand. And one of those is spectral efficiency, um, getting more spectrum, or um, the number of sectors uh, and cells that can be split. Um, so, but these each kind of have their downsides. Uh, with spectral efficiency, you really need a high quality signal with minimum interference. Um, spectrum is something that's really scarce and is also quite expensive. And um, with uh, splitting your cells and your sectors, that increases um, interference. Um, and you need to keep the noise as low as possible. And with L can you still hear me, Lisa? Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay. Yeah. So with uh, LTE, you have you know 44 different operating bands and three different technologies, and this is really really challenging. So Shannon's law says the capacity of any system is limited by the noise in the system. And LTE is an interference limited technology requiring a high signal. So the closer the users are to the radio, the better their experience is. Um, and as they get further and further uh, from the radio, the challenge is really at the cell edge, trying to get the users to have a good, good experience there. So one of the things that we've uh, found is that just uh, a drop of one decibel in the uplink ses sensitivity due to PIM can reduce wireless coverage by 11% in your macro network. And uh, we've seen drive tests that revealed up to an 18% drop in the download speed, the download speed when PIM uh, level is just slightly increased. So this brings us to kind of what are the requirements in these LTE networks as they're getting built out um, that are driving higher and higher requirements. So um, in, in a multi-band DAS, um, these sites have to support multi-band configurations where multiple bands are shared and a common DAS infrastructure. And over the years, the number of bands to be accommodated has been constantly increasing. And as a consequence of that, you have this intermodulation product resulting from multiple carriers creating combinations of different frequency bands that fall into increase drastically, as you can see in the chart up top. The number of uplink bands affected by the PIM products increase as a function of the number of bands supported by the DAS. Moreover, some of the uplink bands are impacted by more than one downlink band combination. And this entails the resulting PIM product and these bands is given the sum of each of the individual PIM product. And it just really becomes a mess. As you can see below, when we're talking about a multi-carrier PIM effect, uh, you have carriers have a 10 megahertz bandwidth that are evenly spaced by 25 megahertz in the PCS band. And it can be seen that there is a bandwidth expansion factor of three for the third order PIM relative to the fundamental carriers. Such, this 3 by 3 bandwidth expansion effect can also be verified by looking at the frequency range with the continuous tones versus the frequency range occupied by the third order products. And on this basis, the possibility for in intermodulation products resulting from multiple uh, modular carriers combinations to fall in band increases even more. So some of the other things that are required in this area here are, you know, higher power. Um, with higher power, you have higher requirements. You also have to allow for the aging effects uh, with the new bands, especially in the older passive networks. Um, and then there's additional technologies that are coming out, like LTEA. Um, and for different, you also have active and passive. So in the active network, we find that, you know, to help uh, mitigate this, a minus 153 PIM rate is typically sufficient. In a passive network, 
you need uh, even lower minus 160 dBc PIM rate is really required in a multi-carrier network. So here's another chart that you can take a look at. You see that most legacy 2G and 3G systems have not been fully tested for PIM. Uh, most in-building antennas have in, do not have PIM specifications and customers have not elected to pay the premium uh, in order to do that. And not all passive devices um, have PIM specifications that are 100% tested and that, that really can uh, play havoc in the system. So when we're talking about um, networks that are indoors, even sometimes only with two bands, it's possible for these overlapping PIM products to fall into the same uplink, causing this interference. So one of the best things that you can do in this type of case is work with minus 160 um, PIM products. And that really allows you to have a greater margin, and uh, with that greater margin, you're going to get a better signal. So Comscope has introduced a minus 160 line of products um, that includes splitters, hybrid couplers, directional couplers, tappers, and, and terminators um, for these types of demanding applications where your PIM performance is really critical. Um, all of these products have increased frequency range from 698 to 2700 megahertz. They're all rated uh, for outdoor. They come in DIN and N-type. They're all IB wave um, ready products. And in addition to that, we 100% test our PIM products. So we have two tools out there um, to show you the transparency and the testing of these products. And that's our web track system. Uh, and we also have a mobile app called C-Track where you can enter the serial number and that will show you all of the um, tests that are done, the visoir, the PIM, the isolation, the insertion, and the coupling plots. Um, and you can have that quality assurance um, of all the testing that we're doing. In addition to that, we've come out with our 153 antennas were just released this month. So those are, those are available now. And we have both indoor and our stadium and antenna uh, stadium outdoors and we have both um, omnidirectional as well as the um, directional uh, and omni MIMO antennas that are now available for those. So another thing, um, those, those are great to be used in both the active and in the passive uh, DAS deployments that are out there. But in the active networks now, we've also uh, taking a look at, you know, can a DAS be intelligent enough to seek out the PIM? And, you know, if an operator could see and better locate where the PIM is, um, we've created products in our IPOI product that allow you actually to go out there in our ION platform and be able to let you see the PIM right out to the remote unit. And that saves time in figuring out what the issues are there. But you know, wouldn't it be even better if uh, DAS uh, could be free of PIM forever? Um, and we also have solutions that, that allow you to do that. And that would be with our IONE product line. Um, and in our IONE product line, we're using a CAT 6A cabling. Um, so there's no need for a passive device. It's a software-based system. And, um, virtually eliminates all of the PIM in the network for that. So with that, I'll end on our Saddleback Stadium in Calgary, which is currently getting upgraded. And I will turn it back over to Mike and Lisa. Thank you, Diane. That was great. I do actually have a few questions. Um, I have one question. Um, are cable assemblies tested for dynamic PIM? I'm assuming they're talking about uh, jumpers, um, and yes, they are. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions they want to submit? If not, I'm going to turn it over to Mike for any questions he might have. I don't see any questions, so Mike? Yeah, Diane, so uh, w one thing that's come up a lot lately is uh, 
4310 connectors, uh, are, are they available on the passives? I know you mentioned the DIN and 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 as, uh, on the passives as well as the antennas. Yes, so we're coming out, all of our antennas as well as, all, as our passive devices will have the new 4310 um, connectors on those and those will be available later this year. At, at the same PIM rating or I'm assuming at NIC 160 or better sort of thing? Yes. Yeah, and 153 for the antennas. Yeah, the antennas um, are all at minus 153. Okay. And the, and then the passive devices will be at. Minus and you, on the antennas, you you mentioned that they they launched last month. Is that, does that mean they're actually available to ship now, or taking orders, that kind of thing? Yes, we're taking orders, and um, I know for sure in North America um, they are. We have them in stock. Um, and they should be elsewhere in the world as well, but we do have them. I know in our in our warehouse here in North America, we do. Okay. Um, I noticed on one of your uh, your, your screenshots that uh, uh, you had a PIM calculator. Um, is that an online tool, or is that something that's available to other people, or? Yes. Yes, that's available on our website. If you go to our resource section on the website, you'll see that we have the PIM calculator there where you can input your data and it'll give you your PIM calculations. Okay. And anything else you'd like to add at this point, Diane? No. You're good. Lisa, any, any further questions come out? No, nope, there hasn't been anything else. So I, I guess I'll just say thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, just a reminder that this was recorded and, and you will receive a link uh, to the video in an email. And if you'd like a copy of the presentation, just send me an email and uh, and I'll get you a copy of the PowerPoint. And uh, thank you for yeah, joining. Yeah, and if, and if people have questions uh, afterwards, they can uh, reach out to Lisa and then uh, they'll, they'll be uh, distributed to my, myself and Diane to answer as well, too. Yeah, right. and, and I'd like to also thank Alliance, too. If people have any questions on their in-building needs to contact Alliance uh, or your ComScope representative, and we'll be happy to help. Okay, great. Thanks, everybody. Great. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Thank you. Bye-bye.